So, hey guys, um, um, well, I was uh, told to play this game, it's, it's, um, play by heart, um, I, w I was told it's a Homestuck game, <laughs> even though I should be, uh, editing my three other let's plays i decided hey play by heart sounds kind of cheesy but it's homestuck so that that's extra points right there <laughs> um i uh, i caught a glimpse of the loading screen before this little part here so i assume it involves um dirk and jake besides the the colors right here <laughs> dirk no, Dirk, stop it, Dirk, Jake, Dirk, Jake, yeah, let's just get to playing, I'm excited, let's go blindly, like Terezi, except we can't smell or taste colors, which is sad, get your wrist up, boy, the boss needs to see you for some, you are now completely awake thanks to this asshole's shouting, your brain helpfully provides the name Hearts Boxcars. He's one of your fellow Midnight Crew members and has a special sort of hatred for you. One that is absolutely and completely inexplicable. Come on, well, let's move it or I'll really thrash you. I'm going. Slow as goddamn molasses. I said, I'm going. Don't lose your head, dude. I hope slick knife you, you little shit. If the boss needs to see you, Boxcar's wishes have a good chance of coming true. You have no idea what Slick wants, but you should probably be on your guard. Not that you aren't always. It took you long enough, kid. Pretty sure it didn't actually take more than a couple of minutes, but whatever you say, boss. You better cut this ass to where i cut you out for you. I've got an important job for you, so listen up. You're gonna take out the English kid. What? The worthless offspring of that miserable green asshole. The one that's the biggest goddamn insult I've ever had the misfortune of interacting with. Jake? We don't gotta make this complicated with the name of the kid, we just gotta make the kid dead. It's about damn time we offed him. We're gonna destroy the felt once and for all. Pains the hell out of me to admit it, but I can appreciate the way you work it, kid. You ain't as completely worthless as I thought. So I'm giving you this hit and hoping you don't screw it up. You want me to kill Jake? Don't make me repeat myself. No enough of this bullshit. Go murder that brat and get fuck. <laughs> Go murder that brat and get your ass back here. This wasn't exactly what you planned, but it looks like you've been given your objective, so at least that's a start. You enter your room to gather your equipment and thoughts before you go into hitman mode. As expected, the place is fully equipped with stereotypical mobster paraphernalia, guns, cigars, a switchblade, glass bottles of what might be moonshine, more guns, damn there are a lot of guns. You've also got a closet, which, to no, no one's surprise, contains clothes. What will you do? Explore! Uh, oh, okay. Pile of guns. The weight and shape of these weapons feel off to you. Firearms are not your style, but it looks like that's all you've got. You pocket the one that seems to fit your hand the best, which, and with, uh, with any luck, you won't need to use it. Probably will. Oh. Moonshine. These remind you of a certain someone. And you nearly smile, Roxy. Until you remember why this moonshine exists at all. In any case, it's better safe than sorry. You take one for the road. Is there any- oh! Ooh, switchblade. It's about as close to a katana as you're gonna get. Might as well take it. Is there anything else besides a closet? No? Okay. Oh, like this music. There's a nice trench coat in here. Double-breasted. 
very suave. You put it on and slip your hands into the deep pockets that are perfect for concealing weapons. There's something in one of them. Oh, oh Jack of Hearts. I, I get it, because... Because uh, Dirk is the Prince of Hearts, and the top two cards in the deck are King and Queen, and he's not a king or a queen. He's the Prince of Heart. Therefore, he's given the Jack. Yeah, yeah, that, that works. Is there anything else I can click on? No? Okay. Jack of Hearts. It's a playing card. You decide to keep it. You are now about as ready as you can be. Time to find Jake. Hit the streets. You leave the Midnight Crew hideout and wander down the sidewalk while think- Oh, thinking, not thinking. Thinking over your current problem. The problem being that you have no idea where Jake is. There are a number of places and a steam member of your rival, rival gang the felt could be hiding about. Out, not about. Truly, the options here are staggering, what, especially considering the nature of your target, and your mind is drawing a complete and total blank. A guy like Jake English could certainly get around. You feel it would be best to seek some advice and come up with a plan before you make your move. You of all people know better than to dive into a situation without being fully informed first. Your mind helpfully reminds you your mind helpfully reminds you of just the person to go to in a situation like this. Your feet seem to know where to take you as you are now standing outside a very familiar bar. Enter bar. You observe the bar and its mixture of human and care... Carapace? Carapace? It is carapace. <laughs> One carapace is sitting is behind a pi the piano, playing a jazzy little ragtime number. You glance around the you glance around and spot a familiar face behind the bar. Approach familiar face. Hey there, rocks. How's been? How's bu business? How's business? Dark. Hold on, I gotta get my Roxy voice on. Dark. Oh, uh, never mind. Uh, I'll, I'll get it soon. <laughs> A long time no see. Business good business. You know me, I keep things real. Real boozed up. You're drunk, go home. <laughs> you watch her maneuver around the bar, picking up bottles and glasses with practiced ease. Not case. I read that as case by accident, but I read it out as ease, which is good. <laughs> she pours a glass of some kind of amber liquid on the rocks and slides it your way. You accept picking up the glass and taking a measured sip. It burns your throat and warms your stomach, and you fight the urge to wince at the aftertaste as Roxy leans over the bar and grins cheekily up at you. So, what brings you around these parts? What, besides seeing a pretty face? Oh, shut up, I know you. <laughs> Something must be up, right? Nah, you caught me, I'm afraid. I'm looking to scope some intel out on a job I'm working. You think you can help me out? Can't make me promises, but I can see what I can help you with. Lots of juicy gossip around here. Plenty of people come in here and got some pretty loose tongs after a few drinks. Tongues. <laughs> You'd be surprised when I know. That's what I'm counting on. I've got business with one Jake English. Happen to know where he's hiding out nowadays? Aww. You know I can't give info like that to rival gang members. Could cause all, all kinds of trouble for my bar. Neutral territory, Turkey. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm not looking to cause any trouble for you. If you can't say, you can't say. But you know someone who can, right? Sorry about that, my mom had come downstairs and 
Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. I need to get my Jane voice ready. <clears throat> my God, no. <laughs> Let's just do this. Hello, message. <laughs> oh, hey there, Janie. Dastra, I think this might be just the gal you're looking for. But you didn't hear it from me, Kay. Roxy returns to tending her barn and its patrons while you turn to regard Jane Crocker. So, I hear you're in need of some assistance, Mr. Strider. You hear correctly, Miss Crocker. Can you clue me into the whereabouts of our mer mutual, mutual acquaintance? Jade, e Jade, Jade English? Oh my god. <laughs> Can you clue me into the whereabouts of our mutual acquaintance, Jake English? Before I do that, what is the nature of it? Of this business you have with Mr. English. I know your type, Strider. How can I trust that you aren't about to be the catalyst to yet another gang war? It's been relatively quiet lately between your two groups. I'm feeling a little suspicious. Ugh. My god. Ugh. Uh, lying is bad. I I guess I can be as vague as possible because I'm not telling I'm not telling a lie. But I'm not exactly being truthful either. Like I'm not giving anything away. Yeah. Be as vague as possible. You decide to tell the truth, but as be as vague as possible. I'm on a job. Top secret Jane. Hush hush. You know the drill. Poppycock, you know better than to hold back from me. Ugh, you know better than to hold back info from me, Strider. Do you want to know what English is? Ugh, fine. Slick wants me to off the guy. Now, I'm not one to disobey orders, but I've got a few questions I'd like to ask Jake first. Might change my mind about all this. So, so you can rest assured... That I won't be going barreling after him, guns blazing. I've got plans of my own, and to be frank, I could give a shit about what McStabby has to say about it. Hmm. Well, whatever the case, there's only one place that Jake English has been seen around lately. He's been keeping a suspiciously low profile. If you want to find Jake, you need to scope out the felt mansion. Shit. That's just what you need right now to sneak into the heart of your rival gang's turf to turf in order to off their second in command. Whatever, you face worse you've faced worse odds than this plenty of times before. You got this. Thanks, Jane. I owe you one. Now from okay. And <laughs> don't you forget it, Strata. <laughs> Now, from what I can see, this- I guess this is an AU? Kind of? I guess. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I don't know. You leave Jane to her drink and give Roxy a nod as you head out the door, tucking your hands further into your pockets as the cool night air hits you again. The Faux Mansion is on the other side of town, so you'd best get- Walking. <laughs> Reach the mansion. <laughs> 